What's up guys, welcome back to another Euro NBA video. Today we're going to be talking about top 4 surprisingly bad teams so far in this NBA season. Um, it's only like 2 months into the NBA season, so these teams could easily like easily turn it around and, and become good again. But right now, I'm, these are the top 4 teams that are not living up to expe expectations of what like what the fans thought they would be like some fans thought these teams would be good but then they turned out not to be good so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy coming in at the number four spot is the atlanta hawks you might be wondering how how are the atlanta hawks surprisingly bad they got rid of al horford and jeff teague over the offseason but no they first off they got dwight howard in the offseason so that that should make up for al horford and they have dennis Schroeder, who could make up for jeff teague but yeah and also, there, here's a big factor of how of why they're surprisingly bad this season. They started they started off the season like undefeated. They started off like first in the East, uh, next to the Cavs, and then all of a sudden they just started doing bad. Like they started off undefeated, and Dwight Howard was putting up numbers like like he did in Orlando, but then all of a sudden. They start going on losing streaks, and Dwight Howard barely does good anymore. So yeah, that's why they're at number four. Also, the Atlanta Hawks record is 10, 10 and eleven after being undefeated in the in the start of the season. So now they're not even five hundred, but at the start of the season they were like one of the best in the East, and they were undefeated. So they just they're a surprisingly bad team in my opinion. So yeah, that was number four. Okay, so number three is the Dallas Mavericks. The Dallas Mavericks, um, I mean, they've been... People kind of thought they were going to be bad, but, like, not this bad. They're, they have the worst record in the league. Be, like, even the Sixers and Lakers have better records. Even the Pelicans have a better record. Like, oh, my God. Like, their lineup, their lineup on paper is not even that bad. They have, they have Darren Williams, um, Wesley Matthews, um Harrison Barnes and um like Andrew Bogut and Dirk Nowitzki so their lineup is pretty good like how do, how are they doing how are they surprisingly bad they have the worst record in the league and well some part of them being bad is is because you know they've been their team has been struck with injuries a lot like Dirk Nowitzki's been out um uh, Darren Williams has been out JJ Breyer has been out with injuries so that's kind of acceptable that they're that they're a worse team than last year, but not this worse. Like literally, like, like four and fifth, the worst record in the league. I thought they were gonna be like, like worse than last season, but like not this bad. So it looks like they're not gonna make the playoffs for the first time in a long time. But yeah, that's why they're number three. So yeah, they're number. That was number three. Number two is the Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers last year, they surprised everyone by making the playoffs after they lost Nicholas Batum, LaMarcus Aldridge, Wesley Matthews, and a bunch of more players. But then they made the playoffs last season, so people were thinking, oh, they got better players in the offseason, and they are, and they still have CJ McCollum and, and um, Damian Lillard. And Damian Lillard said he was going to go for the MVP this season. So, you know, they're going to be good, right? No. They're barely above 500, or maybe they're below 500. I actually don't know. Um, but yeah, they've been surprisingly bad. It looks like they're not going to make the playoffs this year. They might squeeze in, but it looks like they're not going to make the playoffs this year. Um, I think I know why they're doing bad though. It's I don't think I don't think they like it, I don't think it's because of injuries. I, maybe it's because of injuries, but I don't know. But I think part of it is because last season people thought they were going to be bad, and then they turned out to be good. So, um, so like, no one, people thought they were going to be bad. So all the teams that were reversing them, they, they were surprised. But this season, they know they're good. Like, the opponents know that the Portland Trailblazers are good now. And they know to stop CJ McCollum and, and Damian Lillard. So they're doing that now. They know it now. They know to stop Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. So now they're doing that. And it's working out. Because, like, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum are not... Well, I mean, they're doing good, but like not like their team's not winning. So, yeah, the opponents, the opponents of the Portland Trailblazers are learning, like 
Because last season, CJ McCollum was no one thought he was going to be good, but then he turned out to be good. So every, he did, like the opponents were caught off guard. But this season, they know CJ McCollum is good, so they're stopping him now. So yeah, that's why the Portland Trailblazers are number two. Alright, so number one is the Indiana Pacers. The Indiana Pacers had one of the best off seasons this summer. They got Jeff Teague, Al Jefferson, and Thaddeus Young. All three of them are good scorers. And they're only 10 and 10. They're only 500 so far into the season. How are they doing bad? If, like, literally they got Jeff Teague, Al Jefferson, and Thaddeus Young in the offseason. And they already had Paul George, who was an MVP candidate. Well, everybody thought he was going to be an MVP candidate. And they already and they had Miles Turner, who was a who like could have been like if he would have had more playing time, he could have been the rookie of the year. But they're only ten and ten. They're only like five hundred. How did how are they doing bad? I think I know why they're doing bad. It's because all their new players, Al Jefferson, Daddy Sung, and Jeff Teague, they have to they have to develop into the Pacers system. They can't just come in and become like really good with the team. They have to learn the system and learn how to play with Paul George and Miles Turner and all the other players. And also, Paul George has been out a couple games. So, yeah, he's been injured and he got suspended in one game. He got suspended because he kicked the basketball into some fan's face. Uh, it was an accident, though, so it wasn't even intentional. I don't think he should have got suspended, but you know he did. Um... Cause like it was an accident. He kicked the ball, like he tried to kick it into the stanchion, but then he kicked it into some fan's face. He went to go hug the the fan, and say sorry. So I don't think he should have got suspended. But we're not talking about suspensions. We're talking about how bad, how they got bad. But yeah, that Paul George has been out, so that's why they're bad. And their players have to develop into the Pacers system. So yeah, that's why they're number one on this list. But I think. I think they could, they should easily like overcome this and become a good team again and make the playoffs. So yeah, that's all for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. And all these teams could easily turn it around and become good again. Except for the Mavericks. I don't think they could turn it around and make the playoffs. Maybe they could turn it around and like get a kind of good record. But I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. Sorry Mavericks fans. But yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video. And I'll see you next time.